Good morning. morning. Welcome to our worship this morning. It's great to see you. It's great to have those of you who are joining us online uh, join us this morning. I'd like to open by reading from Psalm 66. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praises to the glory of God's name. Make glorious his praise. Say to God, how awesome are your works, because of your great strength, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth worships you, sings praises to you, sings praises to your name. Come and see God's deeds. His works for human beings are awesome. He turned the sea into dry land so they could cross the river on foot. Right there would be, we rejoiced in him. God rules with power forever. Keep a good eye on the nations. Don't let the, even the rebellious exalt themselves. All the nations bless our God. Let the sound of his praise be heard. God preserved us among the living, but he didn't let our feet slip a bit. But you, God, have tested us. You've refined us like silver, trapped us in a net, laid burdens on our backs, and let, our people, let other people run right over our heads. We've been through fire and water, but you brought us out to freedom. So let us offer thanks and praise to God as, as we enter into this time of worship and join together in our opening prayer. Shall we pray together? Master Gardener, you revive us when our bodies grow weak and when our spirits faint within us. Though we may be bound by our worries, your word is not chained. Help us to build houses of joy and plant gardens of faith as we pray for the welfare of our communities. Help us bloom where we are planted, that your harvest of hope and love may be bountiful. In gratitude for your blessings, we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand and we'll sing together, O Four Thousand Tongues to Sing, hymn number 57, verses 1, 2, 5, and 7. prepare for a time of prayer, I want to lift up uh, some joys and celebrations. We've got actually, uh, we'll see an announcement later about we're kicking off today, uh, Operation Christmas Child and Dress Alive Dolls, some ministries we support in anticipation of Christmas. But we're starting early because all the items have to need to be in in November, so I want to give you some time to participate in those. We also know, I've gotten word, and uh, don't accuse me, but there was a relative who requested that we know to let you know somebody celebrated a birthday yesterday, and we want to say happy birthday to Dale Urquhart, and uh, if you didn't want the recognition, <laughs> and we're going to sing to you this morning. Let 
bless you there. That was a request from your sister. So, <laughs> so if you haven't had a chance to meet Dale, he's Eileen's uh, son and visiting from Ottawa, right? Is it from Ottawa? So welcome and glad to have you with us again this Sunday. So let us prepare our hearts for prayer, and I invite you, as we do so, to let us join together by saying our Lord's Prayer, and then we're going to go back through and do some silent prayer as we break it down into a time of praise and, uh, and the different components. So let us begin together as we say uh, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I invite you to offer to God in silently or naming out loud any praise or thanksgiving uh, you want to share with God this morning. Lord, we thank you for such a loving church family that you've given us to be a part of. The beauty of this fall day to gather and worship you. Thank you for Gary playing the organ and piano. We thank you for your gifting and equipping so many in our church who faithfully serve to carry out the ministries of Northside. For all the men and women who serve and protect us and their families. Mm. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we pray for peace on earth. We pray for comfort for those who are hurting and grieving, for an end to violence, for those who've been injured through shootings, those who are struggling through health concerns. Bring an end to the war in Ukraine. The people in Florida. those grieving in Thailand. <clears throat> Give us this day our daily bread. I invite you to offer up your prayers for your own needs and the needs of others. For comfort for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, for the Fuqua family. for healing for those who are experiencing health concerns. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Spend some moments offering a time of confession before God. Forgive us, Lord, for the times, for the things we have done that we shouldn't have and for those times we have failed to act in love toward others when we should have. As we have experienced your wonderful grace and mercy, give us just the strength to offer mercy and forgiveness to those who have harmed us in some way. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I invite you to seek God's strength, that you might be the disciples and followers he's called you to be. I 
Help us in our witness. We live before others. Give us the strength to love and to care. And the courage to follow you wherever you call us. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This time we're going to have a, a favorite hymn time. So I've hoped you've looked or had a chance to think about what your favorite hymn might be. So we're going to do at this moment about five or six hymns. And uh, if you have one, if you name it out loud, uh, just the hymn number or the title, and we'll sing verse one of that to give a chance for many of you to get your favorite hymns in. So is there a favorite you'd like to sing first? 437. Just... All right, I heard two. What was, uh, let's go with Jim first. 347. And then I think, Don, you will get yours next. I think that was you I heard over there. This is my song. Church is one foundation. All right.
I heard a 700, and then I heard another one from here. So what's, let's 723. go with... 723. 723, and then I think, was it you, Eileen? Okay, we'll get yours next. Seven, what was that, Marilyn? 723. 431. Let there be peace on earth. So we'll have this will be our final one at this time, but then we'll have another opportunity just before the sermon or just before the scripture. So you can be thinking of some for them too. So let there be peace on earth. Time uh, before we uh, prepare for offering, uh, MJ, would you show the uh, video for Operation Christmas Child? Three, two, one! And when those lids come off those boxes, you have never seen such pure joy. This is amazing, as you can see, the children's faces, their excited as they open up the keys for the first time. What, what makes the, the gifts, gifts more than just gifts, gifts is, is the message, message that comes with the gift. gift. This, this is, is the opportunity for a child to hear the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Christ. The, the mission of Operation Christmas Child never changes. Children are coming to Jesus, and children are taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. Millions of children around the world are being impacted by these simple shoebox gifts. One box can touch not just the child, but the whole family. So we need to keep packing those boxes and pray for the children that God will use this in a very special way. So thank you for being a part of it. God bless you. Barbara, would you like to share about a little more about that and um, the Dress Alive doll? Good morning, everybody. I think the smiles on the children's faces in that video really says it all, how much joy this whole program brings to everybody world, to so many children worldwide. But these are the shoe boxes. 
Um, they are male, I don't think they said that on the video, but they go out to 150 countries worldwide. So this is a great opportunity you know, to help children everywhere around the world. The shoe boxes are out there in the narthex on the table. We've ordered 50 of these. There's, there's 10 of them out there um, from last year, but the rest of the boxes should be here on Tuesday. So if those all disappear out there, hang in there and we will have more on Tuesday. Um, they're really very simple to pack inside the box and also on the table if you need extras. There is a label, so you can pick, you know, gear the box towards a little boy or a little girl. They break it down by ages, two to four years old, five to nine, and ten to fourteen. So everything in the box would be geared towards one of those choices, and you check it off. There is a label in here also, and inside the box also are great ideas on how to pack it. Um, there's a whole pamphlet here. It tells you like a wow, a wow item, a personal care item, different accessories. It gives you lots of options and lots of ideas of what to pack in the box for the child. The label is here. You just put the label on the box. Um, they do request a $10 donation, if possible, um, to pay for the shipping on the box. And there's two ways to do that. You can either go online to Samaritan's Purse and do it online or in the box is also an envelope, and you can just mail your $10 back in the envelope. Um, the boxes will be returned to the church by the 13th, right? Yep, gonna, we're gonna Sunday. dedicate the um, boxes on the 13th, and then we'll take them all down to, um, actually it's Falmouth, they have a distribution center there and they collect them there and then they get them together to send out all over the world. So that's our project that we have worldwide. And then the other kickoff we're having today is for a more local program, which is our Dress Alive doll. Um, outreach is doing, the church is doing sick, dressing six children this year for Dress Alive doll. Um, we have three boys and three little girls. Um, we have, one of them is a newborn baby. Let's do December 10th. And then we have Ryan, a one and a half year old. We have Sariana, a three year old. James, a seven year old. Zania, an eight year old. And Hillary, a nine year old. So we have ages all the way from probably two weeks old up till nine years old. And we hope to dress them head to toe, coats, sweaters, shoes, and also provide them um, with some of their favorite toys. You know, we have suggestions out there on their, they have a wish list for their um, toys and items that they would like to have. So Sue and I will be in the um, fellowship hall this afternoon or right after coffee hour or during coffee hour. And you can pick up the tags for the children. And those will be due back on, the items will be due back on November 15th. And then on Sunday, November 20th, we'll have a dedication to them and we plan to have a wrap party at church right after um, the service that day. It'll also be the day, I think, that we're decorating the yeah. sanctuary, so we can do all that at one time. So again, these are just two great opportunities to put smiles on children's faces on Christmas, which is... What we should do on Operation Christmas Child is the month people are asking. To get it back to the church? For the operation. Yeah. November 13th. Oh, yeah. Just so the church can get to November. I say December. No, no you said the 13th. You just said the 13th. Yeah. So November. November. Yeah, both of them are due back in November um, before Christmas so we can get them out to everybody and get them in the mail. So thank you very much for your support. I hope to see lots of smiles on children's faces. Thanks. Thank you, Barbara. We give thanks for all of God's blessings that God brings upon our lives. We also give thanks for the blessing of being able to be a blessing or serve the needs of others through Operation Christmas Child and, and um, <coughs> Dress Alive Doll and our Noisy Bucket and many other ways. So with thanks, thankful hearts, let us offer our gifts and offerings back to God.
Jesus, the very thought of thee, with sweetness fills my breast, but sweeter far thy face to see, and in thy pray together our prayer of dedication. Author of life, you meet us in our need. Your love and grace surround us. When our world gets turned upside down, you carry us through the trials of life. Your power gives us the strength to find healing and comfort each day. Receive these gifts as signs of our thanks. Accept our praise for your many blessings. Receive your very life, that we may serve you in the ministry of your church. Amen. Please be seated. We have an opportunity for our more favorite hymns. Gary, I see. 363. And can it be that I should gain?
17, and then Trish has her hand. We'll get you next, Trish. Okay, so let's get the online first, 378, because I forgot the number that came from over here. And then my mother-in-law, she gets the last one, or else I'm in trouble. So. 378, Amazing Grace. We'll go back to that one. I, online requested a 378. sermon. I know y'all will be disappointed if we don't have time for that. God be the glory. in our scripture readers. Good morning. Good morning. Today's scripture reading is from Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. Jesus said to his disciples, things that cause people to trip and fall into sin must happen, 
but how terrible it is for the person through whom they happen. It would be better for them to be thrown into a lake with a large stone hung around their neck than to cause one of these little ones to trip and fall into sin. Watch yourselves. If your brother or sister sins, warn them to stop. If they change their hearts and lives, forgive them. Even if someone sins against you seven times in one day and returns to you seven times and says, I am changing my ways, you must forgive that person. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Would any of you say to your servant, who had just come in from the field after plowing or tending sheep, come, sit down for dinner? Wouldn't you say instead, fix my dinner, put on the clothes of a table servant, and wait on me while I eat and drink? After that, you can eat and drink. You won't thank the servant because the servant did what you asked, will you? This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thanks be to God. And thank you, Sue, for that. But somehow we have an error here that that's the right reference, but the wrong wording. So, no, no, I'll, I'll read since I have it in my Bible here. I was like, she started that, and I was like, that's not the sermon I prepared. That was last week's message. So, unless you want to hear it again, I don't remember it, though. But let me read from, that was the first verses of uh, chapter 17, which I guess we forgot to change in the bulletin. The actual reading from Luke 17, 11 to 19, is this. So no, it wasn't your fault. It was my fault. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten men with skin diseases approached him. Keeping their distance from him, they raised their voices and said, Jesus, Master, show us mercy. When Jesus saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. As they left, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he had been healed, returned and praised God with a loud voice. He fell on his face at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus replied, Weren't ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? No one returned to praise God except this foreigner. Then Jesus said to him, Get up and go. Your faith has healed you. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. So my apologies, Sue. <laughs> One fall Sunday, a pastor decided he would skip worship services. I would never do this, but this was somebody else. He would skip the services in the, on the Sunday morning, and he would head to the hills to do some bear hunting. As he rounded a sharp curve on the trail in the woods, he and a bear collided face to head to head. Sent him, the collision sent him and his rifle tumbling down the side of the mountain. Before he knew it, his rifle went one way and he went the other way, and he landed on a rock, breaking both of his legs. That was the good news. The bad news was he looked up and there was this ferocious, angry bear charging at him from a distance. And this pastor could not move. Lord, he prayed, I'm so sorry for skipping services today to come out here and hunt. Please forgive me and grant me one wish. Please make a Christian out of that bear, oh Lord. Please forgive me. I'll never do this again. That very instant, a miracle happened. The bear skidded to a halt. A bear fell to its knees and clasped its paws together. And the bear started praying right there at the pastor's feet. Dear God, bless this food I'm about to receive. <laughs> the pastor got his wish, maybe not exactly in that way. How grateful are you? That bear was a grateful bear, asking his prayers before receiving his meal. Do you make time to reflect on what you have to be grateful for? 
As I think about gratitude, I want to say how grateful we are for the choir this morning, for all the familiar faces coming back, for a few new faces in the choir with uh, Jamie and Jake, and so it's great to see um, uh, a full, all four rows. We haven't seen that in a while, so great, and, and Gary leading, leading them and Antonio being part of them. But uh, for how, how do you reflect, or when do, do you make time to find time to reflect and be uh, grateful? For me, if I can take a walk on the beach or walk through the woods, there's some great trails here on the Cape, or I love riding the bike paths, and those are times that I, as I'm out in God's nature, or away from the traffic and the cars, and it and, uh, gives me a chance to be uh, grateful. One, starting out by seeing God's beautiful creation here, but then that, that leads me to start thinking about other things, my family, other things in my life that I'm grateful for. In today's scripture... We learn about gratitude from a person that Jesus encountered on his journey. As Jesus was traveling to Jerusalem, he was met by ten men who had a disease called leprosy. Now this leprosy in the scripture may not be the same as the modern day leprosy that's otherwise known as Hansen's disease that people have today. It might have been any number of uh, skin diseases or skin disorders like psoriasis or lupus or ringworm. Lepers, though, if they, people who had this disease, they were required to live outside of the city, outside of the community, away from the people. They were also required to have their clothes torn as a sign of deep grief. They had to go bareheaded. They had to have their beards covered as a sign of, like they were in sorrow over a virtual death. The lepers had to warn anybody who passed by them to keep away, and they had to call out, yelling, unclean, unclean. These lepers were outcasts from the rest of society. When Jesus came by, the lepers stood at a distance. They didn't dare go near him. And they asked Jesus, Lord, have mercy on us. They wanted to be healed of this awful disease that they suffered from. They're desperate for healing. But as unclean people, they don't rush up to Jesus. They know they're supposed to keep their distance and live outside of the community, away from other people. Jesus sees them, and Jesus has a desire to be merciful towards them. Jesus gives them an unusual command. He says, go and show yourselves to the priests. Do they use these words, uh, go and show yourselves to the priests, of people who are wanting healing? That may sound a bit odd to us, but in that day, a leper who was fortunate enough to be healed had to first go and show himself to the priest. The priest would examine him and certify that he was truly clean, and then he could return to society. He could go back to his family. So as the lepers make their way toward the priest, they're miraculously <coughs> cleansed at some point on that journey as they start out. But one of the ten We'll call him leper number 10. He turns around, he runs back to Jesus and praises God with a loud voice. He falls at Jesus' feet and thanks him with a deep gratitude. Only one leper gives thanks. One out of 10. Were not 10 made clean, Jesus asked, but where are the other nine? Only one takes time to count his blessings. Only one bothers to come back to Jesus and say thank you. Where were the other nine? Were they not appreciative of their healing? Were they, they did exactly what Jesus told them to do. They were obedient. They followed his instructions. They were, uh, you know, probably so overjoyed they maybe didn't think, think about going back. You can't fault them for that. Gratitude moves us, though, beyond the standard. Gratitude goes beyond the ordinary, and the acceptable. A gracious attitude and lifestyle makes one extraordinary, one unusual, a person blessed. Research shows that people who count their blessings may find themselves sleeping better, exercising more, and caring more about others. People who remind themselves of the things they're grateful for, people who count their blessings every day, show significant improvements in mental health and even in some aspects of physical health. These results appear to be true whether you're a healthy college student or whether you're an older person with an incurable disease. 
And this comes from research that was published in the Journal of Psychology and Social our personality and social psychology. You could be a leper on your last leg, but you're going to benefit from counting your blessings. Here's how this study was performed. There were college students who were asked to fill out a weekly report of five things for which they were grateful. Another group made up of adults who had an incurable disease, they were asked to write down a list of things that they were thankful for. And then comparable groups were asked instead to write down things they were thankful for, but write down their hassles, write down their frustrations rather than their blessings. And the results of this study were predictable. In the end, the grateful groups felt better about their lives. They were more optimistic about their prospects. The thankful college students exercised more. The chronically ill adults who focused on blessings reported sleeping better through the night and waking up more refreshed. The members of the grateful groups were nicer to their neighbors. They were more willing to help people with their personal problems, leading the researchers to conclude that gratitude can serve as a moral motivator. Being thankful is good for your physical and your mental and your moral health. It doesn't seem to matter what you're grateful for as long as you count your blessings. Maybe it's the, if you're grateful for the green grass, or generous friends, or loving family members, or pleasant conversations. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as you are uh, reflecting and showing that gratitude. In this story of the 10 lepers, the biggest surprise in this is that the leper number 10 is revealed to be a Samaritan. And this comes as a shock to Jesus' followers because they see or saw Samaritans as second-class citizens, members of the wrong race, of the wrong region, of the wrong religion. The Samaritan was not viewed as a respectable member of the community. He's the only one, though, to count his blessings. And that, according to Jesus, makes the difference. It showed Jesus that while others had experienced healing in their bodies, this fellow also found healing in the soul. Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except for this foreigner? Jesus asked. And then he said to the Samaritan, Stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. The actions of this outcast leper stand out from those of the other nine perfectly respectable lepers who went on their way without so much as saying thank you. Maybe they didn't return to Jesus because they felt somehow they deserved to be healed. They had suffered enough. Maybe they had so much to do they couldn't take a second to return to Jesus and express their gratitude. Or maybe they were just so excited and overjoyed they couldn't wait to get to the priest and be declared well so they could get back to their loved ones. Your faith is what made you well, Jesus said to this leper. Jesus commends the leper not so much for the faith that asked for healing, but rather for the faith that went back and gave thanks. It's a grateful faith that saves us. Leper number 10 wanted soul healing, and that's what many of us today look for as well. And we're not going to find that soul healing until we're able to count our blessings. So what have you forgotten to say thank you for? In the busyness of our daily lives, our, it's our, our challenge is to find time to count our blessings whether they're large or small, whether they're significant blessings or just minor ones, to be grateful to the one who's the source of every good and gracious gift that we've been given. We don't deserve a thing, whether it's green grass, whether it's kids that get in trouble, whether it's co-workers, caring co-workers, or whether it's healthy hearts, or whether it's frustrations or trials. Our attitude toward each day should be one of gratitude, no matter what we have, um, no matter what we have experienced or, or what we've been given. Author Sue Bender, in her book *Everyday Sacred*, describes how she began to develop an attitude of gratitude. It had, she says, something to do with an exploding turkey. She writes, "My husband and I decided at age 60 and 63, it was finally time that we be grown up." and be responsible. Neither of us is practical about business or financial matters. 
We went to a lawyer and we started the process of making a will and a living trust for our sons. What would you do, he asked, in the case there was an exploding turkey? She thought, was dumbfounded by that, but said, exploding turkey, I asked? What if the whole family was together at Thanksgiving and the turkey all of a sudden exploded? He asked, well, if the four of you were killed in that moment, who would you want to have your worldly goods? And that turned out, she said, to be a terrific assignment, a chance to think about the people in our lives, a chance to be grateful and express our gratitude. So she says, I decided to create a new ritual. I would stop at the end of the day, even a particularly difficult day, and I would make a list, a gratitude list. Who or what do I have, be, have to be grateful for today? So I'd like to invite you. Keep a gratitude list this week. You know, you, um, whether you think of something you're grateful for, when you think of something, just jot it down. You all have got, if you've got the smartphones, you got that notes app on there, you can just go on that and write down it at the moment you think of it. Or maybe if you have a good memory, wait till the end of the day and take some time to reflect at the end of the day. Think back. What have you been able to be grateful for throughout your day? Maybe it's a person. Maybe it's something that happened to you throughout the day. Maybe it's something from your past that you remember. Maybe it's some frustration you experience. We don't always think of those as things to be grateful for, but maybe something comes out of it that, for which we can. Maybe you find some trial that's a blessing you can be grateful for. As you keep this list, Make time to go back through it. Look over it and notice how much God has blessed your life with. I pray as you show your gratitude to God, you will sense it making a difference in your life, that you will know how much you are loved, that you are cherished by God. Amen. I invite you to stand and let's sing together. Great is thy faithfulness, hymn number 140.
Eventide benediction. Let us join together.